All right, in this video, we are going to be covering how to add and subtract integers. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about what an integer is. So an integer, anytime you hear your teacher um, use this word in class, all it is is a positive, it's all of the positive and negative whole numbers on a number line, okay, including zero. So any, if you draw a number line or think of a number line in your head, it is any whole number um, and negative whole number to infinity, right? So, and then also, yeah, including zero. So 3.4 or one half or square root of five, these are not integers um, because they are not whole numbers. Same thing with negative a half, negative square root of five, those are not um, integers. The integers are only whole numbers, um, all of the positive and negative numbers. So. We, there's a few strategies and a few ways that your teachers might show you how to add and subtract integers, but we are going to be using the number line. There's ways like integer chips and um, different ways, but uh, I think the number line is the easiest to visualize and kind of get more of a number sense. So let's start off with just a regular, um, addition fact that we would see in early elementary. So we have three plus seven, and we know that if we had a number line down here, um, we would start at three, right? And when you add, you go to the right. Okay, so three, and then we're gonna add seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be our answer here. So now we would just have to count to there. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, right? So we knew the answer was 10 from the get-go, but that is just how you would um, show it using a number line. Okay, so we, um, you would also see maybe something like this where you would start at three and you would see like an arrow drawn to add seven. This arrow up here is just showing that going to the right is positive and then going to the left would be to subtract, right? All right, so let's do a different problem here. Okay, so what if we had um, three, we're start with three again, um, three minus one. Okay, again, this is a um, number sentence that you would see in early elementary, but just to review, we would start at three here, and then when you subtract, you go to the left, right? So I start here at three, and I'm going to subtract one, so I'm going to the left one, and my answer is two, right? So the way you can do this here, and I didn't show you on the other problem where we had three plus seven, right? We said three plus seven was 10. You can also switch the parts of your problem. So um, we learned that this was commutative property of addition. We can also do seven plus three equals 10. Show it the same on the number line. You would start at seven, go to the right three times, right? And you would get to the same place. So we can switch up the order of the parts when you're adding. Um, for this problem here, you can also do that. So this problem you can write as negative one because we would put this uh, part first and then this positive three next. So it would look like this. 
okay? And you would get the same answer that you got up here because again, you're just switching the order of the parts. So we're gonna get into adding with negatives now, okay? Okay, so the problem that we have here is negative six plus two. So I went ahead and drew my number line and the only thing we're gonna do is start here at negative six, and I'm going to add two. So remember adding, I'm gonna to go to my right. So I go to my right one unit and two units, and I end at negative four. So that's all that you have to do here. And again, with addition, the commutative property of addition, you can switch these two parts. So I have a positive two and I have a negative six. So if I wanna write the two first and then the negative six second, it's going to give me the same answer as I got above here with negative six plus two. So you can rewrite the problem um, you can always rewrite the problem with addition and subtraction problems. Um, you just have to switch the order of the add-ins or the parts. All right, so let's try a different problem. We're going to look at, um, let's look at a positive um, plus a negative number. So we'll have two plus a negative four is what we'll look at next. So let's just get our board ready. Okay, so we have a two plus a negative four, and again, you can rewrite this with the negative four first, and then the positive two next. So either way you would do this problem or rewrite this problem, um, uh, you'll see that one of the rules in adding and subtracting integers is that whenever you have two operations that are together um, without a number or anything in between, uh, you have these set of rules that we follow. And so if you have an addition sign and a subtraction sign, we say a positive and a negative will just equal a negative. And there's reasons why we're not gonna get into that in this video, but this, would rewrite as two, and instead of the plus a negative, it would just be minus four, and that's what we would um, rewrite. So all of these answers that we're gonna get here are going to be the same because all of these problems are asking for the same thing, okay? So let's look at the number line. Mm, why is this not writing for me? Did I not pick the right color? There it goes. Okay, so we have, let's try this original problem here where we're starting with two. Okay, so there's my two and then I'm going to add a negative four. So adding a negative, I'm gonna have to go to my left because I need to go to that side of my negative, my subtracting. So I'm gonna go four units, and I'm just gonna do a couple of tick marks over on this side. So I have starting with two here, and I'm gonna go four to the left. So this is one, two, three, and four. So this here is our answer. So if this is zero, we have negative one and negative two, okay? So again, like we said, two plus a negative four is negative two. This is the same equation here, so this answer would be negative two, and this answer would be negative two, but let's just check it out first. So let's look at this one here. Two minus four would give us the same line here. We start at two, we go to negative four to the left, okay, would give us negative two. If we started at negative four, so here's negative two, negative three, would be here and negative four would be here, right? And this time we're gonna add two. So adding, remember adding, we go to the right. Sorry, I have these opposite colors here. It's okay. Um, so negative four, we're starting here and we're gonna go to the right two. So I'm gonna go one unit. Ooh, I'm super, 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 I drew this incorrect. All right. 
Sorry about that. Okay, let's redraw this. So we already had negative three here. Okay, so this would have been negative four here. That's that's perfectly fine. So we have negative four and we're gonna go to the right two times. So we have one unit here and two units here. It's gonna bring us to that same number. Okay, so again, you can rewrite any of the add-ins when you are adding and subtracting, okay? Um, so those are the rules for adding and subtracting integers. Let's go over, um, I'll write down all, oops, I'll write down all of the rules for you right now, okay? Um, actually, there's one more thing that I wanted to go over with you, and that is when you're um, dealing with larger numbers. So let's say we had a negative 32 um, plus, oh, and we haven't done the minus subtracting from a negative either, so we need to cover that as well. So let's say we have negative 32 plus a 15, right? So you can draw your number line and you can uh, start at negative 32 and add 15. Um, but this time I wanna show you a different way to do it. So if I were to have a positive 32 plus 15, the easiest way to do this is to rewrite it vertically, right? And do it this way, correct? So I would have five plus two is seven and three plus one is four. Okay, that would be the quickest way to do it. So same thing when we have larger numbers here, I have a negative 32 plus 15, okay? Um, I want to write it vertically where I have one of the numbers here, one of the numbers here, okay? So let's fill in this. So the rule is, and again, you can use the number line if you are more comfortable with that, but the rule is when you have a negative number, um, and you are adding or subtracting oops, a number, um, you want to look at the absolute values. Let me use a different color here. You wanna look at the absolute values of the number, okay? And if you don't know what absolute value is, I have another video on that. I can link it below, but basically, um, when you have, it's the distance from whatever number is in the absolute value, um, that the distance from that number to zero. So basically distance is always positive. So it would be, this number would be 32, this number would be 15, right? You're basically taking away the negative. Um, so the rule is you look at the bigger number. Okay, so this is the bigger number, the 32, and you would take that sign for your answer. So whatever sign is next to the big, the larger, number when you're looking at the absolute value, that's the sign that you're looking at for your answer, okay? So my answer I know is going to be negative, right? And now I can just take these numbers only, so your absolute values, and take the difference, okay? Difference means to subtract, right? So you would just do that regularly. I'm going to have my 32 here, and I'm going to subtract my 15, okay? So we can group. So I have 12 minus five is seven, two minus one is uh, one. And then I know my answer is gonna be negative, so I can just put it there, and here's my answer, okay? So let's try another problem just like that. Okay, where I'm going to have a negative and a positive. Okay, so let's say, let's change my color here. I have a, mm, let's do it this way as well. So I can have a 10 minus a larger number over here. So let's say minus 27, okay. So in this case as well, we have only 10 and we're subtracting 27. So you can automatically see that your answer is gonna be negative, but also 
I can look at the absolute values once again. Okay, so the absolute value of 27 is 27. The absolute value is 10 is 10. Which one is the bigger number? Okay, and take that, the sign that's in front of that number for your answer. So the sign that's in front of the bigger number is going to be a negative. Okay, so we know that, that this answer is going to be a negative, right? And now we can just take the difference, right? So we have 10 and 27. We're going to take the difference um, regularly, which is the larger number minus the smaller number. And that gives us 17. Again, our answer is going to be negative, right? We already said that from the beginning. Okay, so that is, those are the steps. Okay, you decide, so the first step is to decide whether it's going to be positive or negative. So decide whether your solution is going to be positive or negative, and then find the difference. Okay. Uh, the difference between the two numbers without looking at the symbols, so just the absolute values of the two numbers. Okay, so let's practice one more problem. Okay, so here we have negative three plus five. And again, we can rewrite this as a five minus three. Okay. So we can look at this and do it regularly, right? Five minus three is two. Um, or if you don't see that normally, and you look at this, we can also look at the absolute values. The five is larger than the three, so my answer is going to be positive. And then I can take the difference between the two numbers regularly, and it's going to be two, okay? So this rule, again, this works anytime you have a negative and a positive. So if you are adding from a negative number or if you're subtracting from a positive number that's smaller. Um, so for example, your positive number is smaller than your negative number like we did, right? Um, or when you have a negative number and you're adding, okay, a positive number, you can use this rule. Okay, so basically when your signs are different, they would say, okay, you can use this rule. Um, I want to go over one more type of problem, and that is when you are subtracting here, subtracting from an already negative number, okay? And for this rule, again, you can draw your number line, and you can start with negative 5 and go 7 to the left. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to look at the rule. Um, and the rule is when you subtract from a negative number, okay, the rule is to um, keep the number or for the solution, okay, for the solution, you're going to keep the negative. Okay, solution is going to be negative. So I'm automatically going to write a negative sign in my solution. And then I'm going to find the sum of the two numbers. Okay, or the two numbers, um, the absolute value of the two numbers. So the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. The absolute value of this negative 7 is 7. Okay, so I would find the sum of 5 and 7, but I know my answer is going to be negative. So this is going to turn into 5 plus 7. Okay, so I have 12 here, and I'm going to put that as my answer. Okay, so when you subtract, from a negative number, okay, this is the rule that you use, right? Sorry, we left it all in one color, but. So 
I want to go just over a little review so you have like a recap of everything that we've talked about right now. All right, so we already, oops, what's going on here? Hmm. All right, there we go. So we already know that when we have a positive number and we're adding a positive number, we know how to do that. We are just adding the two uh, parts. And if we have a positive number and we are subtracting um, a number smaller than what we start with, we know how to do that as well, okay? But the rules for what we've just gone over, if we're subtracting, from an already negative number, okay, the rule is to keep it negative, so your solution will be negative, and then you add the two numbers, okay? When you have different signs, so I can have a negative plus a number, or you can start with a positive and subtract a number that's larger than what you have, and for this one, remember, you're looking at the absolute values and taking the sign of the larger number. So this number is larger than 3, and the sign in front of it is 10. Or sorry, the sign in front of it is positive, so my answer is going to be positive. In this case here, the 20 is larger, the sign in front of it is negative, so my answer is going to be negative. And then from here, you're just taking the difference between the two numbers. So 10 minus 3 is 7. 20 minus 15 is 5. Okay, so I hope you got a lot from this. I hope you um, can put this into practice. Um, and yeah, check out the um, multiplication and division uh, or multiplying and dividing integers video that is next.